Here's your Weathercast America Quick Cast for Monday, May 5th, 2025. In this forecast, we're going to break down the rain and storm chances, thanks in large part from an Omega block pattern that established over the weekend and is expected to continue at least through the middle of this week. So let's get into it. First, here's a look at the Storm Prediction Center's severe weather outlook for Monday. SPC notes a marginal risk for parts of the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast, as well as for portions of Central and Southern Florida, along and ahead of a frontal boundary draped across the Florida Peninsula. In both of these eastern areas of severe weather risk, damaging winds and large hail are the primary threats, but a couple of tornadoes can't be ruled out, especially with the additional instability across Florida. The SPC also highlights an enhanced risk, a level 3 out of 5 for severe weather, in West Texas on Monday afternoon. Centered around the Midland Odessa metro area for severe storms later this afternoon and into the evening. This activity is enhanced by the cutoff low over the desert southwest as Gulf moisture is pulled northwest over Texas and interacts with that colder and drier air over the desert southwest. Paired with additional daytime heating, an already volatile atmosphere is prime for storm development. The primary severe risks for West Texas are large hail, some very large hail is possible but damaging winds and a tornado or two are possible, especially if the storms stay more discreet rather than cluster soon after initiation. And looking at the HRRR model, we see storms firing along the Texas-New Mexico border late in the afternoon and early evening on Monday, then propagating east as a cluster of storms. We'll have to watch the hill country of west central Texas for any discrete storms that are out ahead of that line that works east across Texas in the early morning hours of Tuesday. Going forward, we may see a few stronger storms in the northeast on Tuesday. Looking at the 3km NAM model that goes a little further out than the HRRR, if there is any slightly higher areas of potential severe weather on Tuesday in the northeast, that area is likely in eastern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, up into central portions of New York State, southeast of Lake Ontario. And those severe chances for the northeast would be highest in the afternoon and early evening on Tuesday. And if models do continue to uptrend, I wouldn't be shocked if the SPC puts out at least a marginal risk in the Northeast on Tuesday, very similar to the Monday afternoon risk. Turning our attention back to Texas, the Storm Prediction Center currently outlines a slight risk, level two out of five for severe weather, in central and east Texas into extreme western Louisiana. Out ahead of that low pressure moving further east from its position over the desert southwest, the severe weather risk that day largely depends on the strength and coverage amount of overnight convection. If there's more clouds with rain and storms early, that should hold back the development. But if overnight convection is more sparse and clears out earlier, that would allow for more recovery time in the atmosphere. Looking at the HRRR model, we're just on the extent of this short-term high-resolution model, but we can see hints of a couple different storm modes on Tuesday. A couple of clusters of strong to severe thunderstorms along a boundary almost acting as a warm front across the Red River in North Texas, Southern Oklahoma, and possibly working into Western Arkansas. These clusters would mostly elevate chances for damaging winds, especially in those Boeing segments, and maybe a quick spin-up tornado or two. Meanwhile, the model hints at more discrete cells further south across Central and Eastern Texas. If those do develop, they pose a higher chance of severe weather and possibly more of an all-hazards threat that day. Right now, it's a little early, but we will have to watch the model trends. If the model runs keep trending up, I wouldn't be shocked to see an enhanced risk upgrade by the SPC for portions of Central and East Texas on Tuesday. For midweek, we can use the experimental RRFS model, the Rufus model, so don't focus too much on the intensity, but we can see the positioning of storms and some possible outcomes of storm mode. We can see that one of the possible outcomes is the early discrete cells cluster and form a mesoscale convective system that works further to the south and east across Louisiana, maybe pushing as far as southern Mississippi and coastal Alabama by Wednesday. If that does develop, it could bring a severe risk for portions of the central Gulf Coast from near Houston through Mobile on Wednesday. And if this model does verify it, it's indicating some clusters of storms developing and kind of playing off each other along the Gulf Coast, especially the Texas Gulf Coast and also Louisiana. That could increase a flood potential in this part of the country if that does verify. Looking further out at the overall jet stream patterns for this first full week of May 2025, we can see the prominent features of that Omega block, the dual cutoff low pressures. Eastern low will shift away from the US by midweek as it gets pulled away by the jet stream off to the north. 
but that southern low is going to continue to meander from the four corners on Sunday into New Mexico by Monday and then further east across the southern states as the week continues. The prominent models all indicate that it will degrade over some time this week, but if it persists a little bit stronger, that could enhance some more severe chances across the south into the weekend. And at the least, it will enhance the rain and storm chances across the south this week. And looking at the GFS, at some of the jet stream level winds, this little jet streak in here on the right side of this low, that's what's going to spark some of the severe weather and enhance chances of severe weather in Texas Monday going into Tuesday. There's kind of a little hint of that, but a less significant jet streak, and that could cause some of that severe weather in the northeast as well. By Friday, we see some indications of a pattern change. Another low will dig into the northeast from Canada. Models are a little mixed on the strength of that low, but it could lead to some severe storms across northeast Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York into the northeast. The Euro model digs the storm further south and a bit slower than the GFS. If that does verify, that could lead to some stronger storm chances in the mid-Atlantic. We'll get more details on a potentially very wet weekend for the Northeast as we get closer to those days. But the bottom line right now is both the GFS and Euro models show a deepening of that low over the weekend. So it will likely mean rainy and windy and also cooler conditions for the weekend in the Northeast. That would be May 9th and 10th, 2025. The GFS even shows some signs of some general troughing still existing across the Gulf Coast by the weekend from the remnants of that cutoff low that we're going to watch across the southern tier of the U.S. If that does persist, that could keep the Gulf Coast and Florida a bit stormy late this week and into the weekend, but it looks like by the weekend we'll be free of any large-scale severe weather events. A lot could change between now and then, but both the GFS and Eura models indicate a very large trough ejection from the Rockies sometime in the middle to late next week, at least around Wednesday, May 14th. So we'll look back to the high plains and the central states for increased severe weather chances by the middle of the month. Between an active pattern for Texas and the Gulf South this week, a potential for a stormy weekend in the Northeast, and looking out at the next round of severe weather across the plains later in May, we'll be very busy here on Weathercast America with additional forecast videos, live streaming coverage of severe weather. So please like and subscribe to this channel, click that bell icon to get notifications when we go live, and as we near that peak of severe weather season, it's important to stay weather aware and have multiple ways to get warnings and updates. Have a great week, everyone.